Okay, so <clears throat> the other day I made a unboxing video of the Spur 6 chassis and in that video I promised to make a assembly video of the same chassis. That's what we have here. Um, I'll be using my Tika T3 uh, action which is safe, there's nothing in here, the bolt is out, there's nothing in the barrel. The barrel is either a Lorton Valter uh, or a Schulzen Larsen <clears throat> or an Otter. We don't really know which barrel it is. We know it's a 1 8 twist and we know that it makes, within the first 100 rounds, um, makes a 20 millimeter ish group with ammunition that's made for a different barrel. So it's not even tuned for this barrel. Um, there is a vertebrae break on there. I'll be running uh, with the Spur um, Arca rail adapter. I'll be running that with a with the little piece of Picatinny rail they supply in the box. I'll be running that with a Fort Meyer set of legs and a Collis K624i. Um, this is my or my gonna be my uh, my PRS long distance rifle what you're going to want to make sure of is that you have your um, recoil lug from your original Tika that's what is used in the spur chassis there is not a recoil lug supplied which is okay I mean you have one from the original so no biggie and we have the weights over here we have some more weights over here I think I'll be using all of them I want to use the external ones on the front and the internal ones as far back as I can get because I want the uh, I want the balance to be right around here when the when the whole thing is put together. We have our um, we have our our nifty booklet with uh, a bunch of different data in here. We have some Newton meter um, notes on how much to. To tighten down with that's all right there I'm not going to bore you with the details of that I'll just be using that for myself and getting into how to mount up a barrel in an, a chassis what I like to do is that I like to to stand the rifle on its end so let's do that so what I like to do when seating an action in a in a chassis is you put your recoil lug down the recoil lug hole and um, that's quite obvious which one that is so I'm not going to go into further detail and then you stand it the chassis up on its end then you take your action with your barrel on it and you place your action and your barrel into your chassis assembly. Now what this does is that all the weight of the barrel is now on the recoil lug. Which of course in turn means that the recoil lug has been seated properly. Or that the weight of the that the weight of the the recoil or the, the barrel is on the recoil lug which is a good thing what's not such a good thing is that I did not remember to bring over a screwdriver so once you got your action in the chassis you just take the two provided screws and I like to tighten these down as hard as I can. Well, hard as I can. I can I can kind of feel how much pressure I'm putting on this. So I'm happy with that. Now, now we have a basically a, a rifle that could work just as is. Um, it is now 
time to put on the forend. And the forend is this little guy. And depending on what kind of person you are and what kind of mood you are, I guess you could you could put the forend on first and then put the weights on after. Um, I would prefer, and that's what I'm going to do, to put the weights on whilst whilst the chassis is on the bench. So I'm going to put you guys over here. So now we're on on the bench. And we're going to take our scope, our collis, and put that over there. And put our little baggies over the over the under. We're going to put the Okay, so all the outside weights have a geometry that goes with the forend. So they just simply fit on the outside of the forend. They go on with three screws each. And you got a you get a baggie full of little screws. And this is a torque 25, I recall. No, torque 20 just like it is on all the other on the iSIM and on the on the what's it called um, on the Arca rail adapter and most of the uh, the screws you get from from Spur are torque 20 except the bigger ones on the iSIM which are torque 30 and I understand that because these are all M4s and the torque 30 ones or M6 so and what I'm doing is just I'm putting on the weights loosely so that I can come back and torque them all down at the same time and what that does is that you of course make sure that all your weights stay where they're supposed to go and if I know a spur, then they have provided me with some extra screws, which is a good thing because I like to make make some of my own stuff for the spur chassis. Hoping to send some of my ideas back to spur and maybe have them pick up on some of them, maybe put them into production. That would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. Oh, wrong way around. There we go. And would you look at there? Plenty of extra screws. So you can even throw the screws away if you want to. I wouldn't recommend that. It's not good for the environment. So, what does it say on torquing these down? Is that just with. Uh, Torque action screws is five newton meters. The forend, not to me, thoroughly degrees prior to torque at four newton meters. M6, five newton meters. All right, so these don't really have any torque settings. So we'll just kind of put it down to feel. And in Denmark, which is where I'm situated. They call this Jusk Hanmoment, which roughly translates to redneck torque. And as I said earlier, I'm going to go with all my external weights on the front and I'm going to put these in. Right, let's see, flip that over, and the geometry on that goes like so. So, we want to make sure that we line up. And we're just going to use the some of the extra screws that we had from the external weights. It's probably fine, I'm guessing they're not too long. And this is just a question of 
holding down or holding up the weights and making sure that the geometry of the screw holes are the same as the as the orientation you put in the weights they only go one way so it's kind of hard to mess it up um, you gotta have some long finger to do this so like seriously stupid long fingers um, which is why I'm probably gonna cheat a little bit because I cannot reach that in there and I cannot reach that from the other side either so just gonna let that slide down there and see I got that oh, that's good we're good I almost thought that I got that oriented the wrong way around so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that. No, I'm not going to use a screwdriver. What am I thinking? Um, let's see if we can catch that hole. And I could. So, and once we have one of the holes caught, we can tighten the rest down. Now we're lacking two of the external weights, and I almost got that one push it around the wrong way. There we go, a bunch more screws. And let's see if we can catch again, catch one of the screw holes in here. Let's see if we can maybe do that with a screwdriver. Okay, let's see. What can we do? Can we hold that? Can I reach that with a finger? I can almost reach it. That's a far, far stretch. For a finger. Ah, there you go. Got it. So all these weights are all the weights are in. Let's see, do I have the right? Oh man, I put it in wrong. There we go. Now it's easy peasy to, to reach the, the weights with your fingers. At least with my fingers. I got kind of long fingers. Which for some things is good, for other things, not so much. But mostly, it's a good thing. And all these screws are, of course, countersunk which makes it a hell of a lot easier because it also centers, it's kind of like a car wheel it centers up the rest of the holes so that you, you don't need to worry about where the rest of them go, you don't have to think about it as long as, 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 long as you got the first ones marked up where they want to be or you got the first ones in the rest are just, the rest are just flying so that couldn't be simpler one of the, the good things about this chassis is that the forend is relatively large on the inside diameter so it'll fit the, uh, the contour of a match barrel which is what I have, I run all my barrels in match well except my Mauser, I have an old Mauser K98 I can do a video on that, put that in a Archangel chassis, put a Vortex Strike Eagle on top of it the uh, 525 by 56 and uh, with a hand load I can actually shoot that quite decently I have I've shot that to a thousand yards my uh, my old Mauser K98 8 by 57 all right that's in all the weights are in this is wow that's heavy all these are a hundred and five grams of weight and the internal ones are 150 grams so it's quite a bit of weight on there now put these back in the baggie so they don't get lost just because you have extra doesn't mean you gotta throw them away and now we're gonna need the action back which means we're gonna have to take a small break okay so got the camera angles changed a little bit and now we're going to need 
R action, the bottom end of the, ch of the chassis, and our fore end. So what you want to do now is simply, and this part's quite easy, you just, and because my vertebrae brake is small enough to fit through the fore end, I can actually just place that on the front of the rifle. Now that's in, we're going to go back with our Torque 30 screws for the forend. There are nine of them in total. And like the rest of the baggies, Spur provides a little extra. So there are ten screws in the baggie. You only need nine of them for the forend. So there we go. There we go. We'll come back and torque those down later. And just for the sake of it, so that we hopefully have a decent picture of what I'm doing. There we go. And two more there. this bag is for. Just an extra baggie of screws. Oh, that's cool. <clears throat> that looks like the baggie that comes with the note. Anywho, <clears throat> we're almost done on this. And driver. <clears throat> I have a Vera and we go to 5 newton meters. Double check with the book. Using the processed outline on step 10 above, torque the screws to 45 inch pounds or 5 newton meters. And that is the 9 M6 screws that hold the forend in place. So one, it's two, it's three, actually not really a lot, it's four, five, and six, seven, eight, Double check for the action. Torque action screws to <coughs> also five pounds. So we better do that. that. That's at least four five pounds. So that is basically it. What I also have here is supply that down so it doesn't fall over. Screw back in its baggie. There we go. What we also have here is the really cool Arca adapter that fits the spur chassis. As I did in the unboxing, I was talking about these small knobs that um, that fit on the inside contour of the rail. That's really cool. Um, I'll show you in just a bit how how cool it actually is, but what I need to do is I need to put this small piece of rail that Spur provided in the box. I need to put that on the bottom here because my Fort Meyer bipod, and I love the Fort Meyer bipod, I have, have, have a couple of different bipods, and the Fort Meyer bipods are by far my favorite. I'm going to put that on that side, put that as far forward as possible. Just open that up. Again, just like 
anything else rifle related make sure to press and push this as far forward on the on the recoil lug as possible so now we have our Tika <coughs> we have our Fort Meyer bipod that goes onto onto our chassis and there you have it so lastly we're going to want to put our scope back on and I know that my scope goes there push that as far forward as possible this is the QDP um, spur I actually remember which one it is. This is the QDP 4602. Is that right? Yes, the QDP 4602 in the 20 MOA cant. I have a 20 MOA cant on the action as well. And I had this diamond cut. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. This is so fucking cool. I, oh, I love that. Almost better than it being fluid. It's classic yet beautiful. And a lot of the other, one of the, th the cool things that I also really like about the spur chassis is that it comes standard with the, with the folding stock. And a bunch of the other ones, I always have problems getting my bolt inside my action and I can try on the other ones and take it up a bit see if it'll fit then go in here and see if it'll go in there always on basically all the different chassis I've used that's been a problem so yeah I got, either got to take this off or with the spur you can flip that around and that goes straight in there and there you have it of course we have our adjustability for length of the pole, nice and quick, I like that, that's really cool, I'm looking forward to getting to know that at the range, and of course you have your height adjustment for where you want your cheek weld, so that you have the, the right height for your scope, and I think that was about it. I don't think I have any more I can throw in this thing. Ooh, magazine. There you go. That is one Tika T3, the 20 inch eight, or 28 inch in a spur six chassis. It's that simple. <laughs>